In the previous video, we discussed how we can derive a formula for the hypothesis using regression analysis. We saw how difficult it is to apply a pure regression analysis to real-world classification problems with complex decision boundaries. This complexity stems from big datasets and highly correlated input features that are no longer considered as independent. The reason is, for big data sets with highly correlated input features, the number of nonlinear terms in the hypothesis formula grows rather out of control, with billions of weights to compute in order to optimize the algorithm. The conclusion is that a regression analysis approach is not at all suitable for this kind of scenarios. In the following, we will introduce a new approach called deep neural networks. The analogy with biological networks of neurons will be discussed in later videos, but for now, we will mainly focus on the mathematical structure underlying deep neural networks. The mathematical structure of a deep neural network can be constructed using four main principles. The first principle states that the decision boundary formula is always linear. This is very counterintuitive, as decision boundaries of complex classification problems are not at all linear. But this will be more clear when talking about the rest of the principles. A direct consequence of this linearity principle is that we no longer consider nonlinear terms in the formula of the decision boundary. Rather, we express the hypothesis as a simple linear sum of weighted variables. Surprisingly, this looks very similar to the hypothesis of binary classification problems with linear decision boundaries. But not quite. Why? The answer brings us to the second principle. The second principle states that every term in the y-hat prediction formula from x1 to xn is a linear hypothesis in itself. What do we mean by this? This means any given xk term can be written as a linear hypothesis. We can see that xk is a linear combination of m terms made of p weighted variables, a bias c, and an activation function r. The weights are labeled with the letter q. Again, each pk term in the xk hypothesis is also a linear hypothesis in itself. It can be written as a linear combination of s terms of h weighted variables, a bias f, and an activation function t. The weights are labeled with the u letter. This linear embedding process goes on and on until we reach a formula of the hypothesis that is expressed by only using the raw input features of the dataset. This brings us to the third principle. This principle states that the embedding process we have seen in the second principle stops at once when we reach a linear hypothesis expressed solely with the input features of our dataset. In this case, the input hypothesis expressed as E underscore K is a linear combination of H input features L weighted with the V1 to VH weights and using an activation function Q. The terms L1, L2, until LH are truly the input features and can no longer be expressed as a linear combination of other terms. The LK terms represent the raw dataset that we are studying, and as we have seen previously, 
they usually come in the form of a data table like this one. The fourth principle states the following. The weights in each of these hypothesis formulas will determine the contributing strength of each term that are applied to it. The values of these weights will be automatically calculated using a deep learning algorithm. We will discuss this algorithm in great details in later videos. But for the sake of demonstration, let us consider the weights WK and WK plus 1 marked in red and green colors respectively. When we expand the prediction formulas for their corresponding hypothesis, we can then assume that when running several iterations of the optimization algorithm, WK tends to decrease the contribution from its prediction formula, while WK plus 1 tends to increase the contribution from its prediction formula. Okay, so the prediction formula for deep learning is linear. The trick is, each of its terms are also linear hypotheses made up in their turn of terms that are also linear hypotheses. This linear embedding process of many linear hypotheses is quite powerful. As we will demonstrate in the upcoming videos, this approach is capable of estimating highly nonlinear decision boundaries, even though the hypothesis at every level is considered a simple linear combination with some activation function. Moreover, the total number of weights that need to be calculated using a deep learning algorithm is far less than the highly nonlinear interaction terms from regression analysis. Now that we have defined the fundamental principles of deep learning approach, let us make things much more clearer with graphical representations of the principles underlying this approach. Before we jump into graphical representations, however, we are going to make a small tweak in the formula of the hypothesis. The bias B can be rewritten in a similar fashion to the rest of the terms by making it equal to w underscore 0 times x0. In this case, x0 is equal to 1. Now the hypothesis can be written in a more uniform way as a linear combination of w's and x's. The purpose of this mathematical change will become clear in a moment. For a start, we can write the hypothesis formula in a more compact way using the summation symbol sigma. The prediction y hat, or the hypothesis, is a combination of a linear summation over the wk, xk terms plus an activation function. We can represent this formula graphically as the following. The prediction y hat the activation function g and the linear summation sigma are laid horizontally. Then, the x0 to xn terms are written vertically. We then add the weights vertically as well. At this point, we can draw circles around the prediction, the activation function, the linear summation, and the x terms. We represent the weights with straight lines connecting the x terms to the linear summation sigma. Lastly, arrows are drawn to represent the linear summation going through the activation function, which in turn gives us the y hat prediction. If you want, we can follow the more compact graphical representations found in literature. To do this, we can merge the roles of both the activation function and the linear summation into one step representation. 
We do this using a purple circle around the y hat prediction. As we have discussed earlier, the weights represent the contributing strength of each x term. This contribution strength can be very strong as represented by a thicker line for the W1 weight. Or it can be very weak as represented by a thin line for the W2 weight. At this stage, we know that every xk term is a hypothesis in itself and can be represented as a linear summation of qp terms and an activation function r. Graphically, this means that every x node is connected to a linear combination of p nodes through the weights q. Then, we draw the summation and the activation function using the purple circles. Every pk term, in its turn, is a hypothesis expressed as a linear summation of uh terms and an activation function t. And again, graphically, every p node is connected to h nodes through the weights u, the linear summation and activation function are then applied with the purple circles as usual. This linear embedding process keeps going until we reach a hypothesis that is exclusively expressed with the input features Lk and their corresponding weights Vk.